Welcome back to another exciting episode of RX Muscle Spotlight, and we have a spotlight for you today. Our guest is two-time Miss Olympia, Andrea Shaw, who just won the Rising Phoenix World Bodybuilding Championships. Congratulations, and welcome thank back you. to the show. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me. You're very fresh welcome. off the win. Fresh, fresh off the win. You know, <laughs> I, I got it. I got it. First of all, I, I, and I've been giving Jake Wood a lot of praise this past week because of this show because you won fifty thousand dollars and an insane looking truck that i'm still trying to figure out what it is what what kind of truck is that so it's a chevy silverado um 2500 oh, oh. it looked like a ford to me but i guess they both look, kind of look the same anyway yeah that's an awesome truck what what's the deal with that thing what, what i know it's tricked out and everything like that what's what's oh yeah i mean it's a hundred thousand dollar truck it's it's a hundred thousand dollar truck yeah. <laughs> I, I'm gonna definitely drive it in Michigan because I mean Michigan snow is. You, you need a truck. Up there. How many? Uh, <laughs> how much horsepower is that thing? I, I don't know. I haven't read the uh, the oh manual my yet. God. You don't it's you're not even gonna appreciate that thing, man. What it a takes, truck! It that takes is. diesel. I know that. <laughs> I'm doing my homework. That, that's a <laughs> some truck. I got news for you, man. Holy mackerel! Oh yeah, they better just get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> is it true that Jake? Well, I, I've been propagating this because I think Helly Nielsen told me this last time. Is it true that they um, that Jake pays the taxes on the truck too? No, I actually paid the taxes on the truck. Oh, you did. Um, okay, all right. He did that yeah. in the past. I know he paid the taxes on the car, but um, I mean, you won fifty thousand, so I guess you got the money for the taxes. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, I was always amazed because some Arnold used to give a Hummer out. You know, uh, if you won the show years ago. Yeah. And I always said to myself, and some of the guys would sell it, and and they they didn't keep it. I'm like, why would you sell something that that, that they you won at a show? It's like you know you want to drive it around almost and say, look at me, I won this, I won yeah. this, I didn't buy it. Yeah, I tell people it's it's the trophy car, right? So yeah, you go. Um, yeah, unless unless in certain cases, I mean, you run out of space, right? Because if you mm. just keep winning and then you right i think jay won a couple of them so that's why he he sold his yeah yeah <laughs> that's a good yeah. problem to have though that that is a great problem to have but yeah so far to the collection we've got the camaro the corvette and now um the silverado so it's uh, it's amazing Unbelievable. so you, you won three of these world championships yes oh I, I didn't realize i thought it was two so you've got three of the rising phoenix championships and then you have two olympia so you're Correct. going for three this year, so absolutely. That's so I'm, I've I've broken a record. the whole, The record for Rising Phoenix was two, um, and oh, I'm wow. the first person to have three. So, and I'm the first person to actually win both the Miss Olympia and the Rising Phoenix together. That is the same year. Yeah, that that's awesome. You know, they used to do. It used to be like the Arnold and the um, and the Olympia. And Iris, I know Iris did it a lot. And there was a couple of female Bibles that did it also, but. Yeah. Arnold never gave away this much money and this much prizes to the to the women. So this is actually better than even though the Arnold people got rid of women's body. Like, who even cares? This is better. Yeah. Yeah. So much better. And that's why I tell some of the girls, like, if you are a female bodybuilder, you absolutely need to be doing both shows. Like, I yeah. mean, if you're if you can get qualified for the Olympia, whether it's by points or or by winning, mm -hmm. you need to do them both because this this is what kept women's bodybuilding alive. So, you know, it's a good way to pay homage. Pay your homage. I, you know what? I got news for you. I, I tell these women all the time. I'm like, that are like on the cusp of women of women's physique. I'm like, do women's bodybuilding. There's yeah. more money in it. Yeah. And, and then some girls just are, about. some girls are really just not suited for women's physique. So I've gotten yeah. three girls so far. I've got one more. I'm going to have a call with tomorrow. Um, when I look at them and I'm like, you, you, you're not placing well because you're not in the right place. Right, and I right. was there, right? I was there, so I get it. But I'm looking at some of these girls and like, I've got some people like, you, you shouldn't be trying to recruit people to be on stage with you. Are you insane? And I'm like, no, but- You're through the sport. We got to get more girls into bodybuilding. You know what exactly. the truth is? Even exactly. if you're not big enough, because these girls think I'm not big. It's like the whole men's thing. I'm not big enough. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. It's structure conditioning too i mean come on exactly there's more to it than just size and that's where they have to they have to know that and and i didn't just arrive here i still had had goals and and certain right. things i need to work on too i mean you always need to be working on something if you're going to be a, a good should, competitor so I mean, you started in figure Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Don't know that. I forgot about that actually from our last interview. Yeah, but. I mean, I it took time. It took time. Yeah. Even once I made my women's um, physique pro debut, 
I still took more time to focus on like right. certain areas that I needed to bring up. And that's all. I mean, again, if some if a girl has really dense muscle and she's in women's physique and she's not placing well, th it, then she needs to come in, into bodybuilding. There's more than enough room. There's plenty of shows. Um, we've got some promoters who are actually bringing in more shows. So, I mean, again, why, why spin your wheels to, to do a show? You go through all the prep. And you're not placing well enough because you're in the wrong division. It makes no sense. Right. All of the sacrifice needs to be, there needs to be a reward somewhere. Who convinced you to do women's uh, bodybuilding? I, I was in women's physique at the uh, Toronto Pro. And, mm -hmm. uh, oh my gosh, I mean, it was overwhelming. Between um, some of the judges, Alina, Linda, um, Irene Anderson, Margie Marvelous, Bob Chick was on stage with me when 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 he turned the mic over to the judge, to the head judge. He started talking to me. He's like, listen, you are definitely in the wrong place. Yeah. You need to get in women's bodybuilding. And it was just, right. it was clear. It was very clear. So that's where, I mean, if I can talk to some of these young ladies and one of them, yeah. I mean, she came in second at the Savannah Pro. I've been talking to her for two years and she finally made the leap. And I'm like, okay, this is what I was telling you. Yeah. You should have been done this. So, I mean, I'm going to talk to as many girls as I can, because even at even at the Rising Phoenix, there were girls in women's physique that should have been in women's bodybuilding. I bet. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Margie Martin the regrets telling you to go into bodybuilding. Holy shit. Man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I mean, we'll get to square up again at the Olympia. So I think I know. No, I know. But if you wouldn't have been there, she could have won a couple of titles, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, then she still would have had to be on the lookout for Hele, but you know. That's true. That's true. It, you know, it's still it's, friendly. I would like to see more talent going into women's bodybuilding now. And, yeah. and you know what? The money justifies it. And you know what? A, a couple people said to me, you know, I don't understand why Andrea Shaw is doing the Rising Phoenix. She's Miss Olympia. I said, dummies, she's doing it because the money. It's $50,000 plus a truck. That's over $100,000 she just won. I would be she's, stupid to not do it. <laughs> she'd be the dumbest person in the world. It's only five weeks apart from the Olympics. Right. And I also like, I mean, because from a standpoint of like my, my physique, mm. I like to do the Rising Phoenix because I get a good idea of where we're going to land when it comes time to the, for the Olympia. And it usually doesn't right. matter whether it's because the first Olympia that I won, it was only like 11 days apart. And right. then it was one month, and now we get five weeks. So, I mean, again, I like to do it, again, as kind of my warm-up show, even though, yes, the intention is to win it and to peak for it. But, you know, I always bring, um, it seems to me, like a fuller look for the Olympia stage after having done um, the Rising Phoenix. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be crazy not to do it. Why not? Just go ahead, get collect the check, collect the car, and move sure. on to the Olympia. <laughs> what did you weigh at the uh, Rising Phoenix show? So before I left home, because um, we didn't bring a scale, so I always weigh myself um, during my depletion. The very mm -hmm. last um, day that I weighed, I was 178 pounds. It's pretty big. And how tall are you? And yeah, I think by the time I finished loading um, with the carbs and the ground beef and you know um, what I, what my coach gave me, um, I probably landed somewhere between about maybe 182, maybe 183. How tall are you though? Uh, five six. That's a lot of that's a lot of muscle. I don't I don't think Iris Kyle ever weighed that much. Uh, they said I'm I'm probably the heaviest Miss Olympia to do. Yeah, but you know what? You don't look that big. On I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying you look small, but you don't right. look as as gigantic as as your weight would appear. But you have a lot of dense hard muscle. You know, you're in really good shape. So yeah. thank you, thank and you. Have, and you have very good legs. You know what? I, I I people couldn't understand how I was so heavy on stage because I, I had a lot of leg. You know, if you have big legs. That accounts for a lot of your body weight. And I think you have really, really big legs. Glutes, really big legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, my dad, you, I mean, genetically, my dad was was just big legs. His mom had big yeah. legs. It just runs in my family. Yeah, I mean, that's for sure. I, mean, I always say that that's like, you know, if you don't have good legs, you'll never be like an Olympia champ. I just think that that's like something that people, it's a backs and legs. And that's what, pe that's what people want to see. Yeah. And those are the things that I probably focus on the most when it comes to, off season, like back and legs. And once I start prep, then, you know, I dial my focus in towards like, you know, the midsection too, because I think right. you, you want that symmetry there, right? So, you sure. know, focusing on abs is, is important, definitely during prep. How much weight did you gain from last year? Or did you gain any weight? It seems like I, I stayed pretty consistent. So I actually mm -hmm. followed an off season diet this year. Um, and yes. that's new for me. So I actually enjoyed that because I had a guest posing coming up and right. um, I wanted to be in shape for Savannah. So I tried to push it towards like the end 
of the season for me, like, you know, right, right up abutted to the rising Phoenix. So it, it ended up being good. So like last year, um, before the Olympia, I weighed myself depleted beforehand, um, before, before leaving. And I was 179. Wow. So for me to be 178 this year, mm -hmm. we're, I mean, I, I was pretty consistent. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, you don't even, you just need quality improvements. You don't even need to be bigger anymore, I think. You know? No, no, uh, just details. So yeah, yeah. Sandy, Sandy was clear with my feedback. Um, just continue to bring details. Cause she told me, you know, that was one thing that Iris was noted for. She ne she wasn't necessarily the biggest girl on stage, right. um, but she definitely always brought the conditioning and the detail. Yeah, absolutely. hundred percent. I agree with that. What, what's the prize money for the Olympia this year? A fifth, from what I know, 50 grand. I hope it's more, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they got, you know, Jake, if you're listening, which I know you are, you got to give the girls more at the Olympia than you gave them at the, at the, at the Rising Phoenix. Come on, man. We got to uh, put up that prize money a little bit. Well, you know, grand, you know, right? I think, uh, you know, they, they're, they're him and Dan, are, I'm sure, are evaluating things just to kind of see where, because this is still a business, right? So I get that part. Right. You know, we, we've, we've sold out Saturday. So that's, a, that's a plus. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. Good. Saturday is totally sold out. So which yeah. is great. I mean, you know, that's what we want. Hopefully we can right. have an even bigger show for next year, sure. bigger venue. So yeah, I'm sure they'll take care of us some kind of a way. Jake finds a way. I love what he does for you guys at, at that rising Phoenix. Cause he, it's like the red carpet is rolled out for you. Guys. Totally. Jerseys, totally. With your names on it. I mean, they, they, they treat you like you're like a uh, Kim Kardashian, you know? Yes. And, that and every be, year they level right? it up every year. That's worth doing the show right there. Even if you don't place, it doesn't matter. You're getting treated like royalty. And all you, you got to do is show up in shape. <laughs> all you how hard is, is that? In shape. Right? Yeah. And I mean, for it to be an all women's show, again, I I love the sport itself. And, yeah. and it's, it's cool for me because I've gone through two other divisions, right? From figure right. to women's physique. It's just a complete celebration of the female athlete. Yeah. That, that is a true, you know, um, I think I, it pulls in my heartstrings. Yeah. I, I, it, it's, I'm going to do that show forever as long as I'm competing. All right. Mar I, I, now, now, now you're committed because now you just said it on the show. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if this was before your time, but back in, in like the 80s, 90s, they had this uh, show called The Women's Answer. <laughs> that competition so they would do pull-ups and squats and all kinds of crazy stuff but they treated them first class it reminded me of what jake's doing now with the women and it just celebrated the women of our sport and i think i think it's a great thing that he's doing over there and i i think that no one else has even thought to do it the women were always an afterthought and now He's put you guys full focus again. So yes, and I'm we're enjoying every minute of it. Truly, I'm sure. I'm sure. We're gonna keep. I'm gonna keep at the girls because again, I, I just hate to see some girls spin their wheels. So right. you know, as many girls as I can find, be it amateur or pro, um, if they're willing to listen, I will definitely give them. I mean, you know, it's just my opinion. What they choose to do with it is is up to them. But right. you know. Do you like the direction of women's bodybuilding? Do you like where it is right now in terms of would you like to see it change? I like to see it. I would like to see it grow a little bit more. I still feel like we have some more flourishing to do. Um, I like because this year we've got some new faces on the page, and and I like I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed watching some of the new girls come along, and it, it was refreshing. It was refreshing. But I know that we've got some more new people that need to come to the stage. So yeah, I feel like if we could grow the division by another maybe 10 or 12 girls, I think we'd be in a really good place. Cause again, you know, when I look at some of these ladies, I, I'm obviously evaluating their physique, but you know, their stage presence, um, are they still pretty and very feminine in the face? Do they carry themselves, you know, a certain way when they're on the stage, you know, there's, there's, a, there's still, I think a certain poise that you need to bring and pageantry. I like to say it's pageantry with muscles. It's really that are simple. You, so yeah. when I are you concerned that, though? Are you concerned that because it seems like the women are still a little on the like older side in terms of like I'm not seeing a lot of twenty year olds coming into women's bodybuilding. Is that is that concerning to you? Well, a lot a lot of the newer girls are older. So we've had some yeah. newer girls like Chelsea Dion, Angela right. Yeo, uh, Christina, and they look Martin. great. Don't get me wrong, but oh yeah, 
So, I mean, I mean, just this year, these girls, um, Sequita, these girls are all between 20 and 30, um, oh, no okay. older than like 35. So, yeah, good. again, this this particular this direction is good. This yeah. direction is good. I just think we need to find more of those girls to bring in. Definitely. Now, now I'll get you in trouble here. Best, oh. Putting yourself aside, best women bodybuilder of all time in your mind. Linda Murray. Hands okay. down. Hands down. Okay. Because again, you, why, I mean, why do you say Linda Murray hands down? Oh yeah, I mean, only why? the only woman to ever retire from the sport, come back, and have so much dedication and passion for it to win two more. Right. I don't know if we'll ever see that again, male or female. I mean, I have right. I know of no men who have retired to come back. And well, win. Iris won ten though, and she did lose once, you know, in the middle of that uh, that run, and she did come back and win. So I mean. I mean, some people say she's won the most Olympia, so maybe she's the greatest of all time. Why do you say Linda? What 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 is it about Linda that you think puts her up above Iris? What she does on and off the stage. The fact that she's contributing she to the sport. You absolutely, say. absolutely. Because again, you have to, if you're given this title, oh, excuse me, if you've earned this title, because it's definitely not just a given. No, no one gets. Um, gets once you've title. earned this title, it's still a matter of being an ambassador of the sport. It's a competition, but like I tell the girls, it for me, it's not a caddy competition. Just show up and do your job. I'm, I'm not saying that we got to be buddy, buddy, and best friend. I'm, I'm nice with all the girls. But is it a competition? Absolutely. Should you want to win? Yeah. If you don't want to win, don't come. However, are you doing things that really continue to propel the sport forward after you decide that your time on stage is up? And Linda right. has done that over the last 20 plus years consistently and she's still going and that to me makes her the best of all time you know i have another weird question to ask you why are all the miss olympias from michigan what, what's going on with michigan there's secret there? sauce in michigan <laughs> <laughs> all these iris you uh i mean this this it's Linda. You're all from michigan yeah Crazy. and we've got uh nicole wilkins who although she was in figure she was from michigan I, I wasn't Corey Everson also from Michigan too or something like that. Or, or I don't know about Corey. I'll have to look and see about Corey. Yeah. But yeah, I think that a lot of Michigan certain, you know, bodybuilders. That's for sure. There's a certain um, and a lot of people. Have you ever been to Detroit? Yes, a, a lot of times. Okay. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's 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 the city that that needed to find a way to develop some grit after the riots and. Right. I don't think that ever really left a lot of, you know, people who stayed. Mm -hmm. Some people left, but most people stayed. And that you just find a way to get it done. There's there's just a hardened attitude that goes right. along with, you know, finding a way. A lot of great athletes though, do come out of uh, Michigan. That's for sure. Oh, I'll say that. Oh, yeah. Well, good luck in five weeks at the Miss Olympia. I, I don't really think that anyone could potentially beat you at all at this point. But you still got to show up and do the show. So, uh Good luck. Uh, you know, I know most people are probably shooting for second place, and uh, I hope they rise, raise the prize money. So, Jake, Dan, if you're listening, we got to boost that prize money up a little bit over the f Rising Phoenix and uh, show them these girls that the Olympia is number one, right? And uh, I, uh, what, what's your prediction for the men's open? Do you have any uh, any ideas about that? Oh, uh, too hard to tell. But I, I mean, I'm. I'm excited to watch the show. I am super yes. excited to watch. To watch. I haven't been this excited to watch the main <laughs> open in a long time. You're not like, going on the record. You're not. You're not throwing any predictions out there. Uh, it's it's too hard because then when I say one, and I'm like, well, what about him? And then I'm like, yeah. oh, well, what about him? Because like, I mean, do you think I, do you think Rami can be beat? If we see a 100 percent on Rami, it mm -hmm. may be very hard to beat him. It may be right. very hard to beat him because he's just he's got a lot of mass. But if if Dennis James and him bring the conditioning that um, I think Rami is capable of, it could be very hard to beat him. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. His Remember, side shots are strong. He hits those yeah. side shots, and I mean he's he's he, they're very strong. Muscle I mean, wins, muscle wins, you get to see his yeah. strings. I mean, I mean when I see details like that, you know that that's going to be pretty tough to beat. Hmm. Who's gonna win? Who's gonna win women's physique in your mind? Oh, Sarah's got some new competition, so this is gonna be interesting. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, th it's been rumored that Shanique may come back, but I mean, you know, we won't know until the list comes out. Oh, is she? Is she is, is, this year? She might come back. It's it's been rumored, but I don't. Really? I, I can't say that. You know, I think it's it's true. Why do you think? Why do you think she left to begin with? 
uh, I think she probably just needed to have some some life time. Young. You know what I mean? Because I think that, and you know, I've, I've I've talked to Chris. I mean, I've heard of Chris Bumstead also. You know, having these moments during prep last year where it was like it got tough and. Sometimes, you know, mentally, I think more it's more of a mental game that right. than people really give it credit for. Sure. I think sometimes you do. And she's young enough. Right. If she needs to step yeah. away for a bit, then, you know, that's just I think what she needed to do. But I mean, if she comes back, I mean, that would be an awesome show because Shanique, yeah. her proportions are unlike anything I've ever seen no. No. Uh, in, of any division. <laughs> maybe, maybe so, you guys can tweet maybe you guys can twist her arm into doing bodybuilding she's still young enough probably she is still right? young enough i just don't think her heart would be in bodybuilding yeah, I don't know. yeah. you never know people it's change as they get older you know so yeah true true well, because she do it a lot more certainly. money in it a lot more money in it true <laughs> true i mean i really do hope she comes back to the stage because again i love you're like i hope she comes back to bodybuilding when i'm done and i'm retired <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly yeah. i mean but yeah, her heart is in women's physique though, yeah. or or wellness. I mean, it's been rumored that maybe the wellness could be a direction yeah. for her. Go, but yeah. I mean, it, it, Franciel is also going to be very hard to beat. Yeah, Franciel is is her proportions are right. they're yeah. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. She, we can call her a freak and mean it in every good sense of the word. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. I, so, who's your prediction for men's open? I don't think Rami. I don't think Rami can be beat at this point, unless he, you know, unless he comes in and so, they do something really stupid at the end. And I can't see Chad doing that. So yeah, I don't, and I don't see Dennis Maybe letting him get now. away with that. I, I don't think he's going to lose, but I, I think that it's going to be a good show because I think we have a lot of good talent out there, okay. and I just think that Rami is the only person who can beat Rami is Rami. So if you know if he does something dumb or something like that happens, and, and that's always a possibility because with bodybuilding, you never. I mean, the guy can get sick the week of the show. And it could ruin his physique. You never know. I mean, there's but no, there's I am no excited to thing. see. I'm, I'm excited to see yeah. the, the rest of the lineup, though. I mean, I want to yeah. see what kind of conditioning Hunter brings. Um, sure. I'm curious to see, you know, how Brandon shows up. Uh, William Bonac, Branch Warren, he thinks that Hunter can win the show. Yeah, Derek Lunsford. I mean, I, I he Lunsford. would be. He he would be. He's one to watch though, because Derek yeah. is. is he's, he's definitely got a physique that's that's world class. I mean. Right. The advantage Rami has got over these guys, unlike Phil Heath, who didn't have this, is that Rami's the biggest guy on stage. So it's hard to beat a reigning Mr. Olympia when he's the biggest guy on stage and he's got good conditioning. So yeah. it doesn't matter how anyone else looks because it's it's just the sheer mass of him, you know? Yeah. He is he, he's a dominating presence. Very, yeah. very similar to Ronnie. Yeah. I mean, yep. When Ronnie steps on stage. There, there, that was the show. <laughs> All Rami has to do is dial in the conditioning, and then no one beats him. You know that's that's how I see it. So, and I mean, from what I know, I think Dennis James is with him. So, I mean, I feel like he's been with Dennis for two months already. I think so. Yeah, I don't. You know, they're they're definitely watching over him. That's a good sign. You know. Yeah, yeah. I feel like with with that much pressure on him, he mm -hmm. will perform. Yeah, will I, perform. I agree. Yeah, I, mean, I think I, I, I think we're gonna see an even better than the 2020 look out of Rami this year. Well, supposedly he never he only trained like for the Olympia. Like he he wasn't training much the whole offseason because of COVID and I, I, you know, the whole lockdown in Dubai. And so yeah. it looks like he definitely made improvements in this offseason. So that might have actually been the truth. So if that is the truth, he might be better than he's ever been this year. And that yeah. that would destroy everyone, I think. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely see that. Dennis, Dennis, when I say when I talk to Dennis and Dennis says he's not gonna be in the US for a while. They're taking care of business. Yeah, I think so. That's too. my prediction. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck at the show, and uh, yeah. we'll get you back on after your your next uh, third Olympia win. And uh, like, uh, stay safe. Where are you going to be yeah. hanging out in Tampa the whole time? Or are you going back home after this? Going back home in about two or three days. Yeah, I just want to get some good content, and then I'm rolling back in because the prep. You know, I got a couple of days off for some cheats, but. Right. Yeah. John, John all, right. Is like, all right, it's time to get back down to business. So back to the grindstone after this That's weekend. <laughs> Great talking to you, uh, and best of luck in the rest of your prep. Thank you. All right, and that's going to take us to the end of another episode of RX Spotlight. I'm Dave Palumbo with our two time Miss Olympia and three time Rising Phoenix World Championship, Andrea Shaw. See you next time.